Hey, this is Patrick Sullivan. Welcome to my shop. This is part three in a series about the fundamentals of how wood grain and glue interact. The previous video tried to blow up the popular myth that miter joints are inherently weak. But miters are technically challenging, and woodworkers are frequently looking for ways to salvage miter joints that they suspect will be weak. Where do they turn? Biscuits and splines. Woodworkers have faith that if they put some long grain wood fibers across a shaky joint, those strong cellulose fibers will inevitably boost the strength, kind of like rebar in concrete. The easiest and most convenient way to add this kind of reinforcing is with a biscuit joiner. In some places, this is called a plate joiner. The slot cutter is very economically priced, and millions of woodworkers own one, so it's very natural to turn to biscuits whenever you want to boost joint strength. Or when you've cut sloppy miters and want an easy solution to salvage the job. Do they make the joint stronger? If so, how much stronger? Let's find out. I tested biscuits on end-to-end -end joints first because that is the one joint which is solely and entirely dependent on the glue strength. Breaking these joints measures the strength of the biscuit itself and its adhesion to the slot without any other variables to complicate things. I cut slots in 3 inch or 76 millimeter squares of wood. I used a number 20 biscuit, which is about 2 and a quarter inches or 56 millimeters long. This pretty well fills the available joint space. I glued up samples in six species of wood, pine, poplar, cherry, walnut, oak, and hard maple. I tried to apply the glue thoroughly to all surfaces. I let it cure for a week, and then I broke the samples in my press. How did they do? The answer, which will disappoint many viewers, is that the peak force that the biscuit joints tolerated was about the same as the breaking force of simple ingrain butt joints of the same species. Adding a biscuit did not make the joint able to support significantly larger loads. But wait, that can't be right. This big biscuit dramatically increases the glue surface area. Surely that must translate into greater strength. Most of us woodworkers take it for granted that the strength of glue joints is directly related to the glue area. However, in these tests, the number 20 biscuit more than doubles the glue surface area, but adds no extra peak strength. I didn't see that coming. I really don't want to call this a shop myth. We should probably call it an oversimplification. I think there is a relationship between glue area and strength, but it's just much more complicated than we thought. Many factors probably play a role. The geometry of the joint and the direction of the force probably play critical roles. But regardless of how we try to analyze this observation, it was consistently true in my tests. Okay, what about biscuits on miter cut joints? We know from the last video that cutting wood at 45 degrees to the grain direction changes the strength of the joint. Do biscuits in miter cut samples help increase the strength of those joints? No. The miter joints with biscuits broke at about the same force as miter joints simply butted together. And, just like miter butt joints, we frequently get splits in the lignin bonds running along the grain. Is part of the problem related to the weakness of the biscuits themselves? Well, watch what happens to the biscuit when this joint opens. Interestingly, when I look at the broken joints with my microscope, I see that the biscuit itself splits and breaks in a surprising way. It turns out that the biscuits are made from beech wood with the grain running at 45 degrees to the length of the spline. Why would they orient the grain in that direction? We know from our experiments with miter cut joints that angling the joint at 45 degrees reduces the strength. Let's review this concept one more time quickly. These are the cellulose fibers. Here's the lignin that binds them together. This is the direction of the force pulling the joint apart. You can see that the lignin absorbs part of the force. And since lignin is the weakest component of the whole system, 
it predictably fails, splitting the biscuit along its long grain. Using this grain orientation for biscuits seems like a design engineered to fail. Well, obviously the next step is to cut open the samples that we've broken and inspect the damage. It's immediately apparent that the biscuit is torn apart by the breaking forces. Those forces are very high because end grain joints are so strong, and the biscuit is no match for those forces. Remember that although the butt part of the joint is end to end, the biscuit grain orientation is side to side. That glue joint is weaker. On this cherry sample, the biscuit was pulled out of its slot on the lower part of this joint. As it does so, it shreds the lignin bonds holding the side grain of both the biscuit and the slot together. In this magnified view, the area outlined in blue is the bottom of the slot where the biscuit was ripped away. You can easily see thousands of cellulose fibers from the biscuit still embedded in the glue. These fibers were held together by lignin bonds which failed, allowing the fibers to split away. Please note that although the biscuits did not increase the peak or maximum breaking force, that does not mean the biscuit does nothing. After obviously and loudly breaking, the joint remains firmly in one piece and demonstrates surprising strength. For example, even though this joint broke completely open on both sides, I cannot pull it apart. It looks like this is where all the glue area pays off. Even though the biscuit splits and tears, pieces of it remain glued. They prevent sudden total failure. The biscuit creates what we might call residual strength, which is insurance against abrupt surprise collapse. I own a biscuit joiner, and I'm not getting rid of it. I am not urging you to stop using biscuits. However, keep your expectations realistic. There are reasons to choose biscuit joinery, but super strength is not one of those reasons. By the way, I'm aware that my testing procedure does not duplicate all the real world forces that your miter joint might face. What if the force comes from an entirely different direction? There may be situations where a biscuit does increase strength. I'll leave those possibilities for others to investigate. My conclusions. Number one, biscuits do not increase the maximum force a joint can withstand in my testing setup. Don't use them in situations where maximum strength is critical. Don't use them as the sole support for table legs, chair backs and legs, ladders, step stools, or carts for heavy tools. Number two, biscuits do prevent abrupt total failure. They add important residual strength. They work reliably for this purpose. Furthermore, there are lots of projects where biscuits could make assembly and glue-ups easier, faster, and more accurate. Number three, biscuits could be used to reinforce miter joints that cannot be closed. They add very little to well-made miter joints except as insurance against abrupt total failure. If miters need reinforcement for maximum strength, then large, wide splines seem like a better choice. Number four, glue area is not a reliable guide to joint strength. Let's just forget that myth. I hope this was helpful, and as always, thanks for watching.